Today, we want to give an update on the COVID-19 vaccines as they relate to those with arthritis. In particular, we want to provide some information on third COVID-19 vaccinations, sometimes referred to as a booster shot. As always, we want to emphasize this information is based on knowledge at this moment in time. So that's early September 2021. We know this is going to continue to change as we continue to move forward with the COVID-19 pandemic. Please continue to check on our website, albertarheumatology.com, for more information. So just for some review and background again, which COVID-19 vaccines are available currently? So really there's two, there's the Pfizer and the Moderna products. Both are based on mRNA technology and now are both approved for those 12 years of age and older. In Canada, two other vaccine products have been approved, one by AstraZeneca and one by Johnson & Johnson, but these are not widely available at this time. Both the Pfizer and Moderna are currently two dose regimens given as an intramuscular injection. Pfizer originally is a 21 day spacing between the two and Moderna 28 days. Although as many of us know in Canada, that spacing changed quite a bit and could be as far apart as four months for some. How do these vaccines work? Well, the mRNA vaccines, DNA vaccines are the other ones, just as reviewed, they do not alter your genetic information. They are not live, so there's no risk of getting COVID-19, and they do not contain an adjuvant, which is certainly a concern for some as we think back to older influenza vaccines and reactions to them. These vaccines work by providing your cells with a recipe to make a small portion of the virus, not the virus itself, but what's called the spike protein, which usually helps the virus enter cells. And then your immune system learns to recognize this in order to protect you. So after the protein piece is made by your body, the cells break down the instructions. In other words, the mRNA, which we gave you through the vaccine and gets rid of it. Once triggered by the protein piece, which your body's now made, your body makes antibodies to it, which will then help you fight the real virus if you are ever infected. These vaccines are generally quite safe. Canada is recognized around the world for high standards for vaccine review approvals and monitoring. Only vaccines that would be considered safe and effective are approved. And they were able to come to market as quickly as they did, not because of any shortcuts in the science necessarily, but because of the broad interest and participation in studies. So we could get large studies very quickly and they were prioritized by review by Health Canada and by other uh, agencies around the world. Are the vaccines safe? So experts agree these vaccines can be used safely in patients with rheumatic diseases, which includes things like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and all the others, and includes all those receiving medications that influence the immune system as well. The CDC and the American College of Rheumatology in the United States, as well as the Canadian Rheumatology Association, all recommend that persons with autoimmune conditions receive the COVID-19 vaccine. There is a concern that without it, there is a higher risk for hospitalization and worse outcomes compared to others without autoimmune diseases of the same age and gender. Now, as you recall, when these vaccines first came out, the Pfizer vaccine was deemed about 95% 95 effective in preventing COVID-19, Moderna about the same. But this data is based on the original studies for the vaccines, and these were done in late 2020. This data does not take into account our new COVID-19 variants. Despite this, the vaccines are still very effective to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death two very important outcome measures here. But there is some data suggesting vaccine efficacy starts to decrease around six months after you've received your second dose. What we don't know is if this could be different for those with autoimmune disease, in particular, those who are on medications to treat their autoimmune disease. So this leads to the question of why should we consider a third COVID vaccination? So as we said, 
There is this concern that there may be loss of e efficacy over time, particularly beyond six months. The vaccines do appear to be less effective against newer COVID variants. And there appears to be some data to suggest a third shot increases that effectiveness again. And the first two shots may also be less effective in the first place for those with autoimmune disease and on treatment as well. So just for some examples, particularly as they relate to medications commonly used uh, to treat a number of rheumatic conditions. So as we've talked about before, both rituximab and higher doses of prednisone, particularly those folks who are on greater than 20 milligrams every day, will typically have a poor response to the COVID vaccine. The body will not probably mount a great response to receiving the vaccine and therefore develop antibodies. In the past, we have recommended that it's important to coordinate when you receive the vaccine with your rheumatologist. Ideally, you receive your first and second shots no sooner than five months after you received your last rituximab infusion and no sooner before a month before your next one. So it provides quite a tight time window. Prednisone also should be at its lowest dose possible to mount the best response. Now this is important with rituximab, particularly in Alberta where uh, those with autoimmune disease on rituximab can go get a third COVID vaccine even today. However, in the majority of these uh, people, they've recently probably received rituximab as they recently, a month before, would have received their COVID vaccines and therefore likely may need to wait until later in this year or even early 2022 before receiving a third COVID vaccine. Again, this should be coordinated with your rheumatologist. This is different than a number of our other medications. So abatacept, hydroxychloroquine, jack kinase inhibitors, mycophenolate, leflutamide, azathioprine, methotrexate, they may all mitigate response to the first two COVID vaccine shots to a certain extent, some a little more than others, none to the extent that you don't have any response, like we are concerned about with rituximab or prednisone, but certainly less. This is where a third COVID vaccine, again, may come in handy as it will boost the response further and bring it back to in line to kind of a healthy person equivalent. Again, it may be worthwhile discussing with your rheumatologist how to optimize timing of a third COVID vaccine when they are available relative to these medications if they should be held for a couple days or a week or two to can optimize that response. Other biologics, specifically TNF blockers, those that block IL-17, IL-6, there seems so far to be less concern about mitigating or decreasing the COVID vaccine response. But of course, many of our patients are on more than one of these medications at the same time. Often, uh, many are on methotrexate with one of these biologics, so the concern is still there. As a reminder, why is immunization important? We know it's the single most effective means of protecting ourselves from COVID-19 and helps ensure our most vulnerable and at-risk populations are protected as well. And it does reduce the strain on our healthcare system if enough folks get the vaccine to allow elective surgeries and other postponed services, including senior rheumatologists, to continue. Protection from the COVID-19 starts about two weeks after receiving the second dose. Increased protection would be similar after a third dose. It's still possible that folks who are protected by the vaccine may still carry the virus and could still transmit it to others. And that's why recommendations for masking are still ongoing. It's still unclear how often we will have to receive the vaccine. Again, it's expected third shots will be offered in the next coming months and certainly have started for some folks now. But whether this will be an annual event or this third shot will may be enough, assuming no further changes with variants and so forth, remains unclear. As always, though, the bottom line does not change. The available vaccines are highly effective in preventing COVID-19 infection, and in particular, they're effective in preventing severe COVID-19 requiring hospitalization. 
they can be used safely in patients with rheumatic diseases as well as patients receiving drugs that influence the immune system. For more information, please check out our website at Alberta Rheumatology.